so it is 4th of July here in Cottage Grove, Oregon in night number three of the Freedom Cup. All of our hard work on Friday and Saturday, the valuable laps that Carly has made, all the experience that she's gained and the setup changes to get her more comfortable, all goes into tonight to see who the Freedom Cup champion will be. But welcome back to today's video. Before we get started, I just wanna say because it is 4th of July, thank you to anyone that has served this great country and protected our freedom. It is because of you guys that we get to do what we love in dirt track race on a weekly basis. So to give you guys some context on the Freedom Cup tonight and how it's gonna work, we're gonna hot lap, we're gonna heat race, and then get right into the A main event. I believe because of the car count rising on the second night, we're also gonna have a B. But the Freedom Cup is all based on points accumulation. So whatever night was your better points night, whether it was Friday or Saturday, that is gonna be the night that you use going into the finale. Right now, Carly is currently sitting 10th. They're gonna take the top 18 in points. You're also gonna gain some points there in the heat race. Wherever you're sitting, going into the A main event, they're gonna be doing pretty much a full field invert. So the high point man is gonna start 18th and 18th in points is gonna be on the pole. That is gonna really make it interesting. Then you're also gonna gain more points in the A main event. And it's not necessarily who crosses the finish line first for the A as the Freedom Cup champion. It's whoever has gained the most points throughout the weekend. But they're just doing last minute track prep here around the quarter mile dirt track in Cottage Grove, Oregon. It was really, really racy last night. Had a bottom, had a top, and even kind of built up a little bit of a ledge. They have the fireworks show behind us. Fans are starting to pile in the grandstands. You have the American flag, and it's gonna be a pretty fun 4th of July as we get our night started. We got a little pre-heat race talk going right now, trying to figure out what Carly needs to do. She is gonna be starting second row outside. Carly, come over here, come over here. All right, Carly, just got done with hot laps. You looked really, really good out there. Yeah, the car felt really good just as of last night. Uh, we didn't really touch it much, so uh, I kind of, I felt pretty comfortable like I did last night. And uh, I think starting fourth in my heat's not too bad. I'll probably just kind of stay on top until maybe I can make a move down low. Does it seem like the track's burning off faster tonight? Uh, kind of not really. I feel like there's a lot of grip in my hot lap. There was a good amount of grip out there. The first group, it was greasy. Then when Carly went out, we tried to get her to go out later just so we could really test and get her back up to full speed. And at full speed, when the racetrack's fast and it's kind of just right through the middle here at Cottage Grove at the Limited, Carly is starting to look better and better every single night. Heat race is gonna be up next. Our approach to what we just talked about, Carly starting second row outside with some fast cars by her, fast cars in front of her. Do all you can. If you can go out there and win the heat race, that would be phenomenal. But if you don't get a great start and things don't go your way, it's also not bad bad because then you'll be right in the mid pack and you'll have a chance at going for the win in the A main event. So see what I'm saying? In my opinion, it's a win no matter what. It's just more laps on the racetrack. She has a chance to go for a win. If things don't go her way, at least she'll get to battle with some fast cars and also get that experience going door to door with other racers.
Well, heat races are complete here at the Freedom Cup finale, and as I've been complimenting Carly all weekend on how she's running the top, she continued to look really, really good there in the heat race. Started fourth and ran fourth. She had a good battle there trying to get into third, but she ran the bottom a lot, and one of the things that we have just been talking about, because it's so difficult in sprint cars, and it's different than how we do in outlaw carts, and that is talking about wing adjustments and how you run different lines. I would say in sprint cars and probably all bigger cars in general, it is so important important out here on the west coast to hit the grip because a lot of our tracks slow down so it's more important to be in the grip and sometimes be slower off the gas have throttle control than to be gassed up sliding through and inconsistent with hitting your line so quite a few times there carly ran the bottom and she would slide off of it and when she came in she said hey we talked about running the bottom really really hard but i just couldn't get it to stick and i'm like you just got to have a little bit more patience i think if you slow down you still want to get into the corner hard to get the car to rotate but by by the center of the corner you almost want to be off the gas and wait till you're straight and drive off in the grip then sliding out of it and a lot of what she's learning is just stuff that she'll continue to perfect it's very very difficult to get it down immediately and like I am as I'm learning different things you know some races I'm better at it than others and then sometimes I go out there for a heat race and I consistently miss the same line over and over so I think she's gonna be about mid pack in points she's uh, just checking out the racetrack to see what they're gonna do they're gonna post the a main event lineup here soon but four to four there in that heat race got some more laps and now we have a 30 lap feature coming up here for the freedom cup finale well the racetrack is already starting to slicken off i know carly said earlier we weren't sure how fast it was gonna lose grip. But once the Modifieds got out there and the sprint cars started doing their heats, it really lost grip even over the course of each heat race. And I also talked about in the last clip, a wing position. That was one discussion Carly and I had because in wing sprint cars, your wing is your biggest friend. We can try to make the race car as perfect as possible in the pits, last minute adjustments, do all we can as crew. But once Carly gets out there, she needs to use the wing. And especially over the course of a 30 lap feature, you know, try to make the race car better and better. Well, you can see they're watering the racing surface at Cottage Grove. I'm not sure if I agree with how much they're working the racetrack. We're here at the end of the weekend. The sun is set, so it is going to burn off a little bit slower, in my opinion, or at least what we've seen from the first couple nights of Freedom Cup. But at the same time, I'm not a dirt guy. I'm not a track prep guy. I'm not an expert, but we'll just have to see. They really worked it. I think it's going to bring a lot of grip back, and I just don't know how fast it's going to burn off. Another problem is these modifieds, just what they do to the curb compared to a sprint car, it's not a bad thing, but it just makes it really, really chunky. And with these limiteds, it's just tough because when it gets rough, and you're on the gas i don't know they just have the power to really get through some of the holes so that'll be interesting one thing we kind of noticed here in three and four but uh, they're just bringing a lot of grip back and for guys having to go through the field i was hoping to see the slickest surface possible a slower cottage grove where you had to lift get the race car tight and really you know be able to slide guys and move around versus kind of just too fast lanes so it'll be interesting to see what they continue to do all right, well, it's the final night of the Freedom Cup. Mom hasn't been in the video all weekend long. How have you been, you know, going through these three nights? Everything been good? I'm pretty ready to be done. Yeah, we are. We, it's, it's been fun at Cottage Grove, but man, you know, especially watching Carly because she's so new to it, the, the nerves are definitely up a little bit. Dad, Carly ready? start ninth? Yep, we're kicking we're ready to roll. So uh, Carly's gonna put, or I'm gonna push Carly off. She starts ninth. In order to win the Freedom Cup, she would definitely have to probably win the race as far as overall points. Cause she's about mid pack, but I think she has a legit shot at winning this race. So she plays all of her cards right, puts them together. We given, we're giving her a great setup. It's just tricky to know what to do with the track. Sometimes it burns off here at Cottage Grove. Sometimes it stays locked down. If it stays locked down, then it's gonna be much tougher to go to the front. So Carly's gonna figure it out. We're gonna give her the best opportunity to succeed and it's time to push her off.
job, Carly. Great job, Carly. Thank you. Well, Carly, a phenomenal race. Can you just talk about all of it? One of the things that I'm kind of learning this weekend is just more and more the spectator's view and what it looks like. The race feels so long from my vantage point, but I'm sure for you, you know, the laps really flew by. Yeah, uh, not, I mean, kind of. There was a lot of yellows, and uh, I was kind of not really getting irritated, but I was kind of getting irritated. Because every time I got past someone, the yellow would come out, and then they would, you know, get back ahead of me. So that was a little frustrating, but uh, you just got to be patient in the car, and uh, that's all I tried to do. Yeah, you really gave it your all, and for a while, you are kind of just running between 6th and 8th, working the bottom, working the top, trying all these different lines. But ultimately, you found the bottom there at the end. What was it about the track changing, and you being able to find that line and then drive it up into 4th after starting ninth? Uh, it was kind of difficult. I tried the top a few times and that's when I needed to move my wing back. But uh, sometimes I would run the top and forget to move my wing back. So then that's when I went back down to the bottom because that's just where I felt more comfortable and I felt like uh, pedaling it through. I'd come off more straight and I was getting a good run on some of them. And I think the last thing to talk about, this was so frustrating because at the end of the race there was a yellow with like three to go and actually the leader jumped the curb and then second and third with the lap car, they all got bottled up and Carly was in fourth or fifth and they were all, you could probably throw a blanket over the top five and Carly almost got by him. Can you just talk about what happened in that moment? I mean, and all of a sudden you look up, you know, and, and the leaders are right in front of you. Yeah, I was, I honestly, I didn't even know what to like think about right then and there. I didn't know, uh, I knew what I was gonna do. I was just gonna stay on the bottom, of course, but I saw the leader go off and then I went past, uh, I think it was third and fourth and I was in third and I was like, okay, like no yellow, please no yellow, yellow light came on. And that that's what I think might've cost me the race there. Yeah, I think Carly definitely had a good shot. But overall, fourth at the Freedom Cup, I think you had up fourth in overall yeah. points. And we just, you know, we wish we could have seen what would happen. And the, even if you don't win it, with if that yellow doesn't come out, I mean, just what the finish would have been like could have been something else. So Carly, great job, successful weekend, time to load up. Well, a great end to the 4th of July weekend. Carly was on it. And I always say I don't like to live in the what if world. It's so easy to say like, what if this, or what if that, or that doesn't happen. And, and it's not really making excuses, but it's just like, you know, the outcome changing. But I really wish I could have seen the finish there if we don't have that last yellow, because I'm not really saying Carly would have won. It would have just been so in interesting to see who would have got the job done and how it would have unfolded, because there was probably four or five cars plus a lap car in there all within like just a couple car lengths of each other. Like I always use the saying, uh, you could have thrown a blanket over the whole top five. And to see who would have got it done just would have been cool as a race fan. And then also the excitement on Carly's side because she kind of had more, more momentum going forward uh, than a couple guys uh, in the top three on the podium there just because they got bobbled up racing each other and one jumped the curb and it, it just upset them on the top side of the racetrack. Overall though, I'm so proud of Carly. You know, this uh, kind of ties her career best run in a sprint car fourth. Uh, She's knocking on the door for a podium and even a win because when you start running up front like this, that's when stuff happens and, you know, maybe a win can fall in your lap. I, I, that, that's also not a great saying because, you know, you still have to work for it, but it puts you in a spot to contend for victories and Carly's right there. But a great way to end our 4th of July weekend. The crew did awesome. Roger, my dad, Carly worked really, really hard. My mom, Carissa, all of our great Cottage Grove fans. As far as the track went, honestly, it was pretty racy. It was kind of a mix of what I was hoping for. As far as the track went, though, in the A main event, it changed from the beginning to the end. They worked it, and I talked about how I felt like they were maybe overworking it, and it kind of ended up as a mix of both. They needed to work it in some areas, but I was hoping they could have left it alone just so it got really, really slick. But at the same time, uh, as far as sprint cars go, the sprint cars ran, they also had a modified feature after, so they had to leave some racetrack for them. But if sprint cars would have ran last and then they didn't have to work it or they worked it before the modifieds and then the sprint cars ran, I was hoping to just see it get a slick cottage grove no grip, wing in the trunk, and see some slide jobs. But overall, Brian Crockett and the whole crew gave them a good surface, and all the guys that started in the back were able to work their way forward. So anyway, time to head home, and we're running Southern Oregon Speedway next weekend, and then we head right into Western Sprint Tour. So we got like a span of six races in eight days. Time to head home. We have two hours back south to Southern Oregon, and then I gotta wake up early in the morning and get everything all washed up because we have some big weeks of racing coming up. After Western Sprint Tour, we have another trip to the Midwest that never stops. See you guys all and thank you for riding along for our journey. Deuces.